Good evening, everybody from Nigeria. Oh, I'm so excited about tonight's events. Thank you so very much for joining me. Thank you for being my guest tonight. Truly, truly appreciate all of you. Please let me know where you are joining me from. Just write the country or the city, as we always do. Good evening. Thank you, everybody. The Lord bless you. Thank you so, so very much. Kenya, thank you. I appreciate. Thank you. Can I know South Africa? I'm coming to South Africa. Thank you. Mali. Well, Manchester. Lagos. Thank you, everybody. USA. Florida. Abuja. Thank you for being a part of this, Botswana. Dubai, oh, you should be sleeping, you're here, Tanzania, thank you, Canada, US, UK, I appreciate all of you, London, England, I just, I just go back yesterday <laughs> from London, Abeokuta, I'm going to be with you this Saturday, Abeokuta, with Reverend Mrs. Achudume, yes, Switzerland, it's a global family, thank you everybody, God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. Today is very special, very special, and I'm going to be doing this once in a while, maybe once in a month or once in two months. Ghana, I see all of you, you know. I'm going to be dedicating these 60 minutes to answering your questions because a lot of you sent questions to me from different parts of the world and on different um, situations. Denmark, Nigeria. Thank you. So I'm going to be dedicating at least once in a while to Sela and answer your questions. Please invite other people. I will come for that court. I will come. You know, I'm in school. You see me now. I'm in school. In my room. In school. I will come. Just, just me. Thank you. Um, the topic for discussion, I'm going to be ask, answering your questions. So if you have any questions, please my team is here. Just put it in the chat box. I have some already. And then I'm going to be answering um, as the Lord helps me. My opening remark tonight is this Newcastle. I'll call my love all of you. Number one, know when to stop. That's my opening remark tonight. That's the first one. Know when to stop. Life is not lived in years. Life is lived in seasons. Psalm 1 and verse number 3. It shall bring forth its fruit in its season. And seasons are seasonal. Nobody lives there forever. No matter how great Pella was, he couldn't have been able to play football in every season. So you must know when to stop. If you don't stop, you will be stopped. If you don't stop, you will be stopped. How do I mean? Let me give you a personal experience. There was a time that I crisscrossed, went everywhere, leading mothers to pray. But I knew when that assignment changed. I knew when it changed. You must not only hear what God said. You must hear what God is saying. Genesis chapter 22, God said to Abraham, go and sacrifice your son. And then he got there and God said, don't sacrifice the child again. So it's not enough to hear what God said. You must hear what he's saying. You must know when to stop. You don't have to run a vision till Jesus comes. You don't have to be doing the same thing forever and ever and ever and ever. Know when to stop. I knew when my assignment changed. So you don't find me going around cities and the world now, doing mother summits. I will do if God leads me. But I'm sure never will it be like it used to be. Know when to stop. So that you will not die. You are not else shall die, else you shall die. You cannot win the whole world. You cannot be everything to everybody. 
know when to stop. I don't know why God sent this to you tonight as my opening remark. Know when to stop. Know when a season has changed. Some of you, you are investing and investing and investing and giving and giving and giving and giving until you collapse. You're in pain. You're still giving. Giving love, giving attention, giving money, giving this, giving that. You are not infinite. You're not. And you need to understand that. You're not. Only God is limitless. You're a human being. It gets to a point where you have to review relationships. You have to understand when an assignment has expired, when a relationship has expired, when you need to move on. Don't die. Please, before you realize this. You are primary to you. Every other relationship is secondary. You are primary to you. Every other relationship is secondary. Understand that. Husband, wife, parenting, whatever, pastor. You are primary to you. Every other relationship is secondary. Don't kill yourself. And there are too many ungrateful people. Cut your head. Remove your eyes. Give it to them. You will still not have done well. So, you're going to wake up and realize that you are 83. You're going to wake up and realize that you are old. Serving and serving and serving and serving and blessing people and investing. Hey, my husband. Hey, my wife. Hey, my children. Hey, my church. Hey, this. Hey, that. Until you can no longer live and you just begin to exist. Until you can no longer bless yourself. This is important to me tonight. Because some of you, you are burning out. You are overwhelmed. You have become disillusioned and you are still giving. You're still following the people that hurt you. Learn to protect your heart. Learn to protect your heart. Learn to protect your life. Learn to protect yourself. Let me repeat myself. Know when to stop. You are primary to you. Every other relationship is secondary. Sometimes when you give people too much, they take advantage of you. Sometimes when you are not available, that is the only time they will appreciate you. That's the only time they will know your value. And let me tell you this. I made a post, I think, was it today or yesterday? That. <laughs> People's memory is so short. It will shock you how quickly they forget the dead. God forbid. If you die, life will move on. This is a message I've preached to myself. And I feel like sharing it with you. Give, give. There are relationships that you give, 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 give. And it is only when you are giving that they realize. One month, two months, three months, six months, they've forgotten. And they keep sapping you and sapping you and sapping you. You cannot continue. Some people can never be pleased. They can never be pleased. I spent like eight minutes or seven minutes telling you this. And it's a crucial thing. Know when to stop. Know when an assignment has ended. Know when the season has changed. You cannot win everybody. That's my opening remark tonight. In my village, they call them Ajemweni Manyene. They eat your food, but they don't praise you. It is what you are doing now, 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 before they now move to another person. You don't know how to do it. You don't know how to do it. You don't know how to do it. Don't kill yourself because of people. Take care of yourself. Take a good care of yourself. Know when your assignment has changed. Know when a season has changed in your life. Know when to stop. You cannot continue to give till you die. Give to yourself too. Give to yourself. If you ever forget anything tonight, please don't forget this. Know when an assignment has stopped. Know 
when a relationship has expired. No, when a season has changed. You are primary to you. I don't care who is involved. Your husband, your wife, your parents, honor people, respect them, but don't kill yourself. Do not kill yourself because of anybody. Okay, let's go to your questions. I have quite a few here, and I'm already seeing some there. How can a woman rise back after a separation from her hobby that really made her lose herself in terms of financial, spiritual, emotional, psychological, she's depressed? My dear, you might want to look or seek for professional counsel, but let me quickly give you this. If somebody has taken from you spiritually, financially, socially, whatever way, do not allow that person to kill you. The person has stolen from you. The person has moved on. You're still mourning. You're still mourning. And it tells on you. Stop weeping. Wipe your tears. And it has been discovered that if you produced it, you can reproduce it. If you produced it, you can reproduce it. So the person took tangible things from you. The intangible is what produces the tangible. Stop looking outside. Stop looking at the person. Start looking inward. And make up your mind that it can be reproduced. It's a matter of time. In fact, now you know better and you have gained time. God blesses by subtraction. So it's possible for people to live your life. That does not mean that your destiny is finished. Let me lay a caveat. I don't know everything. I don't have answers to everything. I'm going to do my best. I've taken my time to pray. And I believe God that he will help me. Now, please, my, in a marriage where the husband is not wanting to hear any advice from the wife, during our marriage counseling before they got married, he refused to do it, saying that nobody can tell him how to handle his own. Even now, there's nothing I do that pleases him. He always finds fault with me. Now he calls me anything. He says I don't want his happiness. That I'm the agent sent to destroy his life. Though he's not here in Nigeria with me. I am so sorry I'm not judging you. But why did you marry him? Because marriage hardly changes people. Marriage amplifies who people are. And what people are. Just like money. Money takes on the character of the owner. You saw the sign. Domestic violence does not just start anyhow. It's cumulative. You saw the sign. You ignored it, maybe because you wanted to be married. Everybody's getting married, so let me go and get married. And there's what we call the law of repercussion. So I need to let you know, because in case you have to go into another relationship, it may even not be marital or whatever. Learn, when you begin to see the red flag, please pause. It may not be no, it may not be a no, but please pause and assess and let people that are better or that know better help you assess it. I like this comment. A beast tolerated becomes aggravated. It's the truth. Marriage amplifies who people are. You are not an agent of the devil. Don't let anybody tell you that. It is who that person is. People treat you the way they are. So don't think that you are the reason for whatever is happening to them. I tell women, you are a multiplier. It is what people give you, your husband in particular, that you multiply back. So please understand that and stop judging yourself and stop blaming yourself. Don't let anybody steal your life. And if he wants to depart, no problems. I won't say more than that. Okay, my question is, my partner and I are ready to marry each other, but I need to go back to school for my degree. He accepted, but there's no university here that I can enroll to. So, our plan was to go to another country so that I can go to school. But he said we should get married first before processing the school. My question is, can I go ahead? If you love him and you know that, he will say, allow you to go to school. You can get married. That's okay. I was in part one when I got married. If he truly loves you and he has your good in mind and at heart, it's okay. If you know that, you can cope with it financially. Okay, I'm going to be as fast as possible. How do I become a kind wife to my husband? How can I be more soft and not hard on people? I think I have this habit of talking to people as if I'm their boss. The fact that you are conscious of it, the problem is half solved. 
It may be how you were raised. It may be your personality. For instance, if you're choleric, choleric can be bossy. Cholerics are always in charge, and most of the time they're right. But you see, we don't have to be flaunting it. We need to understand the fact that you are conscious of it is a sign. So please, even when you are telling the truth, be magnanimous. Be soft. Be conscious. And pray that God will help you. But once you are conscious of it, every time you want to go overboard, you remember and then you slow down. How can you identify your season? Like the reason to step out. When what used to be a blessing has now become a burden, that season is over. It can be a relationship. It can be an assignment. Before, pew, 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 everything is, you know. But now you have to struggle and struggle and struggle and struggle. You might need to review. You might need to think again. The season may be changing. What can you do as a young person to find your true voice or what you are called to do? God needs to give you platforms, I understand. But as you are faithful in little, God increases it. If a man is found faithful in little, God increases it. Gives him more platforms. So, as you are faithful, he increases it. And when you have the privilege of having access so a little, don't abuse it. Anointing can open the door for you, but it is character that will sustain it. Then locate the people that are examples of your dream and understudy them. A mentor, I'm not talking about a mentor, a mentor, a mentor is the shortcut to where you are going. So please, Look at someone that is doing very well in that vocation or that calling and write on their shoulders. Very important. I'm going to be as brief as possible, like I told you. Is judgmental approach to counseling and advice? Okay. <laughs> no problems. Um, how do we move on? When you give birth on wedlock and your partner doesn't want to marry you, move on. How do you move on? Move on. Why would you even give back birth? outside wedlock if i got your question right he doesn't want to marry you it's a pity i keep telling women when fornication takes place you lose you lose more because that person becomes a part of your history irretrievably so please if the person doesn't want you don't marry him that person is going to abuse you <laughs> it will be worse than child birth pain please flee for your life okay I have a boyfriend who wants to marry me, but he wants me to stop wearing trousers. And he wants me to sleep with him. To sleep with him, you are a Christian, is against our faith. Call me old school, it doesn't matter. A man that says until he sleeps with you, he cannot marry you. He say, bicycle, wait for your Bentley. Quote me, I said it. Now, this person wants you to stop wearing trousers. I always say marry from your tribe. The fact that somebody is a Christian does not mean you should marry the person. Marry from your tribe. The person, the fact that somebody is a Muslim doesn't mean that as a Muslim you should marry the person. Yes, that's the truth. When I talk about tribe, I'm talking about beliefs. Religion may be a part of it. Beliefs. Do you believe in wearing trousers? Because you're going to have bigger issues after marriage if you cannot resolve that. He's going to tell you the kind of sex he wants after marriage. He's going to tell you you must take your child to, your, to his mother. They must put in concussions in his mouth. It's, this is just a little out of it. If you believe in it, then consider it very well. Agree before you go into marriage. Otherwise, there will be issues. I know what I'm saying. I'm telling you this. So I suddenly met this man online. I decided to meet and suddenly after we saw, he started telling me I'm the one for him. He said he won't pressure me, but he knows I will definitely come back. Please pray. Do you like him? God can use any situation, online, bus stop, train, church, anywhere. To, to lead you or to meet whoever you want to marry. But be sure, answer truthfully, honestly, some questions like, do you like him? Do you love him? Do you have peace? There's a difference between liking and loving. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to spend the rest of your life with him? Will you be proud to say, meet my husband or meet the father of my children? Are you of the same faith? Religion in, in Latin means religionem. And it means to bind together. 
it plays a crucial role. Do you believe in the same thing? This person believes in payment of tithe. This one does not believe. You're going to have issues. This one believes in covering of head when you go to church. This one does not believe. You're going to have issues. So, speak. Discuss. Before you go into that marriage. But if you know that you have peace in your heart and this is for you, then go ahead. After all, marriage is by faith. What can be done when too much quarrel is involved in marriage? Anytime my husband brings me, something is fundamentally wrong. You might need to get a marriage counselor, a professional. If both of you cannot handle it, because you need to have a roundtable conference, sit down and take your pen and paper. Why are we always quarreling? What are the things I do that upset you? Write these things down. Where you need to explain, explain. Where you need to change, change. Otherwise, go get professional services. Pay so you can pay attention. Your pastor may preach well. He may be a teaching priest, but he may not be a marriage counselor. We put too much pressure on our spiritual leaders. Hey, my pastor, he counseled us. No, 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 no. We need to understand now, just like you pay your doctor, you pay your lawyer. You might need to do that because if this continues, it's going to weary you out and the marriage may break. I paid attention to every red flag, begged him to change and kept on praying for him. But the more I prayed, the more red flags increases. Had no other choice than to flee when I was wrong. Fantastic. I'm giving you an ovation and I'm clapping for you. Please flee. Marriage is not the end of life. Don't let people put pressure on you and overflow the issue of marriage. You must marry. You must marry. So you feel that you are sick if you are not married. So you get into the wrong hands. It's culture. Let's not, please, let's stop doing this. It is not right. Okay, mommy, can you mentor me? Yes, I can mentor you in a structured form. I have, a, I have an executive club. And um, so you might want to send an email to info at funkefelixadejumo.org. Or you send, if you go on my bio, you will see the number. My EA will respond to you. Very from your tribe. Okay. My ex wants to come back, claiming he has changed. What do I do? Please don't just go back anyhow. You need to involve either your family or a professional or your counselor or your pastor or somebody that has authority over you. Because sometimes love is blind though. Marriage is the eye opener. Let There are things, you know, your blind spots. Let somebody be involved. Let's see what changed in him. What changed? Has he gone for counseling? Has he gone for therapy? Or is it because he doesn't have any other life or he doesn't have any other person? That's the reason he wants to come back so that you will not make a mistake, the same, you know, same mistake the second time. Please don't go alone if you must go back. I'm just recovering from domestic abuse and his family are begging me to reconcile with him. But I have not even seen any sign of remorse. He blames me for everything. My dear, stay in your lane. Hold it. Because you're not marrying his family. It's not the family that will live with you. He will live with you. Let's see. Like I just said, the changes. Practical. Professionals that can see. Please involve them. Um, a man can need to pray with you and go to church with you only to change later years in marriage. It's the truth. That's the truth. How do I deal with an elder brother who is not supportive of my business and progress? No, we are from the same parents. He doesn't have to be supportive of your business. Life is individualistic in nature. And in case you think it is out of envy or whatever, then prove him wrong. Leave him out of the equation. Trust God to bless you and go ahead. And sometimes God allows things like that to happen because when we begin to replace God with men, he's my brother, he's wealthy. I will look up to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. God does not want to take any glory. He doesn't want to beg your pardon. God does not want to share his glory with anybody. So, stop looking at him as your source. It's a channel. And God may decide not to use him. And you don't need to have bad blood because of that. And stop this um, entitlement mentality. No. If he doesn't help you, it doesn't make him a bad person. Not at all. And you, don't, you may not have the full picture. You may not even know what he's dealing with that he cannot share with you. So, please understand. Mommy, I keep on seeing a lady in my vision. I can't approach her. She's always in my imagination and visions. 
what can I do? Why will you not be able to approach her? She might want to speak to maybe her friend, or you want to use time to get into her cycle, circle, so you can begin to know her and befriend her first, so you can laugh, you know, at her jokes and all that, and not just go straight and say, I want to marry you. You see her in your dream and vision. Is that what, is that how um, God deals with you? Because seeing somebody in your vision may not mean that that's a person for you. So, are you shy? You might need to boost your confidence. Get online. You will see courses that will help you in that area. You said there's a difference between loving and liking. Yes, when you love somebody, yes, you take anything. God so loved the world. When you like somebody, you are very selective. You want them in your presence. There's a lot of difference. You can love somebody and not like them. It's the truth. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a mother of two. I left an abusive marriage three years ago. There's a man interested in me now, but he has no children. It doesn't matter. He may be your boas that God sent. If you pray and you have studied, by now, from experience, you have known what to look out for. So there's nothing wrong. Your life should not end because you, are, you, you have a divorce. Your life should not end because a relationship stopped or ended. God is not a God of second chance. He's a God of many chances. Some people that may not like what I'm saying, but it's the truth. Your life should not be put on hold. Sometimes it's not our fault that we had a divorce. So must that person just sit down there while you are sleeping with your wife or sleeping with your husband, and then you condemn the person. You cannot be a deacon. You cannot be a deaconess. You cannot. Be, God hates a divorce, but God does not hate divorces. Let's balance this thing, please. So, the fact that he doesn't have children does not matter. I know a man that does not have children. The ma the woman he married has three. He's not a Nigerian, definitely, but he decided that he would adopt those children. And they're fine. They've been married 32 years or something now. And still going strong. So, what do you do when you find out your husband has a child before he married you? And he didn't mention it. And you find out from outside after two years of marriage. That is horrible. That is unfair. That is terrible. Confront him and let's hear his reasons. That's bad. And let's call it spade a spade. That's so unfair. In law, all of you know I'm in school now. In law, that's one of the things you call elements that vitiate a contract. Because, and it is misrepresentation. You lied. It's not right. You love him, you know you can forgive him, and you know you can cope. But he needs to apologize. He needs to explain. And you need to involve not just yourself. Someone that he trusts or someone that he honors or someone that he respects. They need to give him cane. Not physical beating, but he needs to be told. It is not right at all. What are the scriptures to pray for your adult children to marry well? Go check my um, YouTube channel. You will see many scriptures that I have, you know, um, have used to lead women and parents to pray. Please. God wants us to be happy. And it's part of it. Your children will not marry their enemies. You see examples in the Bible. Jezebel, Delilah. You see them. So these are the scriptures. How do you handle a man that wants to marry you but doesn't give you money? Instead, he complains every end of the month. And doesn't have explanation to what he does with his money. Ah, don't marry yet. Too. Do not marry yet. You need to resolve that. Sit down. It's not about the quantity or the amount. Love gives. So sit down and talk to him about it before you're going to marry because it's going to get worse. Marriage amplifies who people are. African men undermine the benefits of professional counseling. Unfortunately, it's sad. It's not even African men alone. I don't know. Men, you know, they, are, they have their ego and they want to, you know, just protect their ego. But I believe that there are still good men and things are changing little by little. How can I get my confidence back after two divorces? My mommy and my sister says I'm a failure. You are not a failure. Who hasn't failed before? You just didn't get it right. And you just learned twice how not to do it. Your future is still very bright and very colorful. Look at Tama in Genesis chapter 38. First husband died, second husband died. But she still rose up above the ashes. There's a book written by Coach Jola Grace. You might want to go on her Instagram page. You know, writing above your past. That book will help you. Because before you go into another relationship you need to build your confidence back like you said and you need to invest in yourself 
How do I pray for my prayers to be answered? <laughs> we have a God that answers prayers. And if you look back, you'll have testimonies. You'll see how God had answered your prayers before. We pray by faith, trusting him that he will answer. I may prove that God answers prayers. So, pray according to the scriptures. Pray in faith. And then mix it, sandwich it with gratitude. Magnify him. Let him know that you trust him. And that he will do it again. Substance abuse, the victims are usually the most affected. Yes, that's true. Can you recommend a marriage counselor, Ma? Um, I would recommend Kingsley and um, Mildred Okonko. Fantastic people. I can close my eyes and recommend them. The Okonkos. Please go on their Instagram page. What if the man doesn't want to say counselor? That's why I keep saying marry your friend. Why will your husband not listen to you? Why will your wife not listen to you? Marry your friend. Because that means that fundamentally some things are wrong. Don't marry someone that doesn't listen to you. Man or woman. Yes, you're going to pray, but you need to discuss it. And let him know the importance. And look, I'm dying. We need to say, cancel all. We cannot continue like this. And put down your feet. Mm -hmm. My husband of 22 years does not believe in black churches. He has, has a very insecure and quickly angered when things don't go his way. Five children involved. So sorry about that. He doesn't believe in black churches. I don't understand what you mean. Maybe Nigerian churches and all that. And this presupposes that you both live abroad. It's okay. You can um, send maybe videos and whatever of very powerful speakers and all that to him. Look for his friends. Look for somebody that can um, befriend him. That can help him. Sometimes um, we say, hey, this person doesn't believe in black. Maybe he's been through some things. Maybe he's been, he's disappointed. He's disillusioned. He's, he's been abused. He may not have even told you. That's one. And then the second one is that maybe, maybe he's a firstborn. Or when he was growing up, he, he was a spoiled child that will always have his way. That's a problem we have when boys are not raised correctly they always don't want to be in charge and when they are not in charge and sometimes it's a sign of um self-esteem problem so we need to understand that that happens um when people i'm trying to just pin where you can send your questions because my team is looking at that um is it okay to have a relationship and not want to marry? I don't understand that. So what will you be doing? Having sex? Or messing around? Or what? No. I think you should marry. There, is, there are blessings in marriage. Blessings. I'm telling you. Now, this is, yes, so, nature. He may not change. But we cannot say you should leave him because you have five children. If, it's not, um, if there's no domestic violence involved, you have managed till today that you have five kids if your life is not in danger okay the questions um at goke williams please send me the questions in the section questions section um, okay um what do i do when a husband is always angry of one's achievement and yet is not ready to be part of one's labor there's nothing you can do just keep succeeding don't flaunt your success trust god for wisdom when you're in the house, be the wife. When you go out, go and succeed. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. And it is not your fault that you are blessed. Just make sure that you still walk in humility. Give him his honor. Give him his, you know, place and all that. In my village, they say, and you won't share village. There's, there are some quarries that can never end. It may end now. It will surface again in two months. It will surface again. Is it because you have money? Is it because you are not a nurse? Is it because you are not a chartered accountant? It will always come up. We trust God that one day he will understand that. Um, I was dating. Okay, still trying to reach in the question section. I'm trying to do that. Okay, this person says, Say with my elder brother, stop responding to him and his calls for money. I wanted to dominate me and my sisters. Yes, I understand. I've been dating my man for almost a year now. 
He's a God-fearing man. He loves and respects me. But recently, he lost his job and has been struggling to find another job. He's struggling finding purpose. That's why you should be there for him. He's a good man. He's got, you know, fearing. Seasons are seasonal. Pray and stand by him. He will remember when he now, you know, bounces back. And I pray for him that the Lord will make a way for him in Jesus' name. I was dating someone and he told me he will love me. I immediately distanced myself and blocked him. <laughs> he will love to someone. You broke up already, fine. How to be sought as a woman in a world of independence and being raised by single parents? I understand you, but it's possible to be a lion and a, and a lamb at the same time, depending on where you are operating from. You're dealing with your husband, for instance. You cannot be a lion. I know that as a friend, there are times when both of you will exchange words, you know, and all that. It's okay. You're normal. But you have to be conscious that you cannot sell your dignity or sell your confidence just because you are in the world of, you know, and all that. Don't lose yourself because of what the world is saying. I hope that uh, Williams is helping me to get the questions from... My friend said she, mar she married wrongly, that God warned her against him, but she was already in love with him, with me. So she went ahead. Now she's not enjoying the marriage. The man doesn't respect her. So sorry about that. That's what I was saying. Law of repercussion. I hope you are not being abused. I hope your life is safe. Sometimes. I'm sorry about that. No one is a failure. You can always start afresh with God's help. Yes, thank you for also helping me to answer. Thank you, Namibia. Thank you. Comment section, please. How can I deal with all the suitors coming? They are married men, and I'm a mother of one beautiful girl. It's a bit frustrating. You cannot marry another woman's husband, please. Life is governed by principles. You cannot. I trust God with you. You cannot. Don't break another woman's home. It will not last. Other people will break your own too. It's the truth. What do you do with a man that doesn't want to take responsibility? It's been over 20 years. You tolerated it. You tolerated it. So you cannot complain. Even in law. <laughs> that's what they taught us. Ah, maybe little by little you begin to withdraw some privileges that will be given to him. So that will be a wake-up call for him. Okay. Um, I sometimes, what platform do you use to buy shares with Pepsi and others? Can you Google, Google at bamboo.com. It will help you. Bamboo, B-A-M-B-O-O. -O. Um, what do I do when a partner keeps on telling you you are disrespectful? Meanwhile, he does something which always triggers it. You see, between, um, action between stimulus and reaction, there's a little space. It may be just for some seconds. You might want to readjust and realign. Because when people make you angry, you have lost control. That person is in control. So you cannot afford to keep on allowing the man to say you are disrespectful, you are disrespectful. It's not a good thing. Whether you are married or not, you cannot continue to be disrespectful. Yes, he triggers it. Can you have a discussion? Marry your friend. I can't say that enough. Can you mar Can you have a discussion and tell him, I'm so sorry if this is what I have been doing, but this is the reason. I don't want to make excuses, but this is the reason. I'm going to try to change, but you will help me if you also try to change and stop, you know, instigating this. Thank you for all these questions. Um. Okay. How can I get my confidence? We have answered that question. Someone told me today that her mother-in-law told her that most men are not trustworthy. Even the Tom Prim ones asking for someone. How true is this? Some men are not trustworthy. Even those praying in tongues, even pastors, even even imams, because they are human beings. I understand that. But we still have good men. And you cannot generalize that. We have good men. I'm married to one. I see ladies here that can tell you that they are married to good people so your mother alone may be speaking from experience i know but it doesn't mean that just that we have bad women too i recently had a revelation about a man being a soulmate but he has been cold and suddenly withdrawn from me what can i do leave him let him go god will give you your own five years in relationship he does not want to go to school or go to church ah his parents not agreeing to us marry so what are you doing 
no school, no church, parents not agreeing. What do you want to go and do there? I beg you. Can I see someone to make you happy? I introduce Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, the, the, the monarch of the universe to you. What no man can do, he will do it. If somebody is telling you here, run. <laughs> run. We are warning you now, run. No. So that you don't come back here and be saying, ah. I'm so glad that I was not trapped into marriage. Mm -hmm. We are also glad with you. Okay, somebody is saying shares, empty and shares are sold through coronation registers. Well, I don't know. Just make sure you, you make sure they are genuine so that nobody will forewarn you. You know what I mean. Um, don't allow her negative feedback get to you. That's true. You're a wonderful woman. You're still to be found. Okay. Um, any other question? It's better to make mistakes in a relationship than in a marriage. I agree. I agree. What's your advice on to a single mom marrying a pastor? <laughs> it's work. But I interviewed um somebody you recently. Look at how God turned things around for her. You just need to invest more in yourself. Get a mentor that will help you. Please invest into yourself because marrying a pastor is double work. Heal before you venture into another relationship. I like that. Yes. Rise above your past. Available on Amazon and in Nigeria. Yes, please. Interpret a dream of twin girls. Well, I'm not into all that. There are churches that when you have a dream, they will be interpreting for you. I don't have that gift. You might want to look at people that do that and then... Because I don't want to give you a wrong interpretation. I don't know the answer. How do I manage my anger issues and choice of words in a relationship? You need to go get a professional. There are people that help us now. If you have anger issues, there's what we call anger management. You can do a six-week course. It will help you. Aside facing abuse. Okay, I'm trying to get this question about... My husband is addicted to masturbation to the extent he was masturbating in front of my friend that came to visit. Oh my God, that's demonic. And he needs help. Please go get him professional help. It's not just prayer. You know, I didn't say go and be praying. He needs help. Something is wrong. He's suffering from something. It's an attack of the devil, spiritual. Yes, that's it. But he needs professional help. And there are people that you can talk to. Please, you can Google. And if you know of anybody, please let us know. I just don't want anybody to say, go to this person and we discover that this person is even um, worse than the problem. I recommended um, Pastor Kingsley and Mildred Okonko. I'm sure they will also be able to help you in that. Will you advise a level 100 students enter into a relationship? How old are you? Are you sure you'll be able to cope with school, work, and that? If you can cope, then no problems. What kingdom service can I render to you? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Please reach out to my office, send a mail, info, or look at the number on my uh, bio. I appreciate that. Yes, so it needs. <laughs> when boys are not raised correctly, it's chaotic. Very true. And we are learning here. Let's raise our boys. Your guest cannot be in the kitchen with you while your boy is in the room with. No. One woman will curse you tomorrow. Raise your boys very well. My guy is not a romantic one. He swings mood. But I have a male friend who is always caring and ready to listen to me. I share my problems and he helps me out. Even my relationship talks, I tell him, but... <laughs> you do hear the sound I just made. You are becoming affectionate to that person. And you need to be careful. Before you start playing your cards, know where you are going. Is it that friend you want to marry that understands you? I wish is the one. <laughs> or you want to go with this man. You need to pause. You know how I started this chat today? You need to pause and think before you go ahead. Otherwise, it will shock you that after marriage, you may commit adultery with this friend. Quote me. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. Okay. How will I know it is my time to get married? Ah, uh -uh, you will know now. Nature teaches <laughs> all things. You will definitely know. I don't need to be telling you number one, number two. You know. Are you emotionally ready? Are you physically ready? Are you financially ready? Are you spiritually ready? Are you ready?
husband. Okay. I've been married to my husband for the past three years. And he stays with his parents. I've not really involved, enjoyed him. Hmm. Because he always makes his family his first priority and makes them thought and makes me third party in our marriage. Okay, makes them a third party in our marriage. Mm. But I'm pissed off. He's the one sponsoring me in school, but I'm pissed off now because most times I get physical abuse from his people. And uh, I've not for once say hi. <laughs> Why are you leaving? Why is he, can't you find a way to get him out of that place? This will continue for life. If you stay in that place for 50 years, it will continue. He has not cut the ties. He's still a boy. He may be a 40-year-old boy. That's the first thing you will need to do. You need to get out of that place. Physical abuse from his people. And if he's not agreeing, maybe you need to go and stay in your father's place. For That's why I keep telling you, women, be empowered. You see why you are being tied down now? Because he's the one paying your school fees. Even if you have to sell pure water, please. You need your dignity. Thank you. What should I do when I feel my home is not seeing progress in almost five years of marriage? It's making me feel like I'm not bringing progress. So stop blaming yourself. Stop judging yourself. Can we analyze the situations before you start carrying the weight of the world on your head? What's he also doing? Can the two of you analyze it? Do you need help? You want to talk about that? You want to? Please, don't blame yourself. Except you think you, are, you really know that you are the one. Can I come to the marriage counseling from you, ma? The quarrel in my marriage is getting me choked. I'm so sorry about that. So, so sorry. Can you please see Pastor Mildred and Pastor Conco? I'm in school and I don't live in Lagos. That may help you. Dealing with your husband, you cannot be like, oh, yes. If you find out your husband cheated on you and you move out to cool your head, but you find out that he didn't call you back home to know why you moved out and it's over one year and he still did not call, something is wrong with that relationship. Did you tell him when you were moving out that it's because he cheated? And why will your husband not call you? Why will you just move out? You should have explained to him. And then for him not calling you for one year. I'm so sorry to say, I think that relationship has expired. I'm sorry, but you might still both need. Maybe you call him or you look for, I don't know, maybe you have pastors or you have people that he respects. One year is a long time. We're both Christians, but different denomination. We both know thought each other one would change to the other's field, but no, the man is a good man. So if you think he's a good man, you want to stay with him, then go and join him in his church. And once in a while, come to worship wherever you you are. Okay. So this is Baruch TV. Who are you? You are always, always cutting my tape and posting. Who are thou? Ha! Huh? Baruch underscore TV. The Lord knows your address. <laughs> we must see one day. Okay. I want to come for a personal marriage counseling from you. Okay, we have read that. Well, what if your partner is cool but he cheats? Can you call? What are you telling me he's cool? Is that the kind of a life you want? He's a public property. He's cool. What's his definition of cool? And the man cheats. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. My husband is living together with another woman and we are still married. Really? What am I reading? Your husband is living with another woman and you are still married. Do something about your life, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. I need mentorship. Yes, I've told you how to go about it. I have a structured mentorship where people pay for me to mentor them. And I think somebody is telling NHN too. Fantastic. How can a young female leader in ministry get the most out of singleness? How does this change as a future relationship develops? <laughs> Enjoy the season while it lasts because you're going to get busier after marriage. So, enjoy the season. Develop yourself. It takes the, the strength on the inside to carry the weight. What if he beats you and begs for forgiveness? I think you need to see Coach Jola Grace. He beats you, best of forgiveness. He beats you, best of forgiveness. I hope he will not kill you one day. Mm. Where do I place my question? Please, um, just the way you have written this now, write it. Write the question. Advice for tired, burnt out, older, single, female, never married. How do I regain joy when feeling hopeless? Um, I understand you. 
get distracted get involved do something that you love go swimming go and watch a movie go volunteer there are people that need you that you're not married does not mean that you are sick no okay you're welcome someone wish to marry celebrating birthday and going to church is problem five kids are enough to resort i think we've answered this <laughs> but you want to dance you can sit dance even if you're watching online why everybody why is everybody asking me questions about marriage 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 <laughs> I want to have a child now due to my cycle as a woman, but I'm not yet ready for marriage. Really? You might want to freeze your egg. Go to a fertility clinic and freeze your egg. You can use it for 50 years. How do you heal from abuse? I just spoke to you to connect with Jola Grace. She is a professional in that area. I don't want to start because I think she knows better in that area. She's a survivor. So Jola Grace, coach Jola Grace. And she just released a book. It's on Amazon. Rising from your past. It will help you. What can you say about husbands who do not protect their wives from mother and siblings? They are, there are still immature husbands like that. It's a pity. But it's the truth. I think you should do your best not to be in their space as much as possible. If you've been seeing them maybe every month, just reduce it. So that there will not be any need, you know, for you to be protected. Abuse... When am I coming to South Africa? I'm coming in, I think it's September or October, and then next year too. Um, you will see the post, just watch out. Abuse from your former pastor, I apologize. I apologize. I know what you're talking about. I'll be there. As a young woman in ministry, how do you go about dating? <laughs> Let's not start that one now. Because you can't just marry just anybody. You know it. Is it advisable to marry a lady that you senior with one year? If you can cope, why not? If you know you can cope. It tells people he's not married, but he's married. That's, that's shameful. Please, what's the rush? Is it better to have kids with both parents to avoid normalizing such? <laughs> okay, you are... Okay, people are recommending where you can. Your husband cheated on you and you move out to clear your head. But your father, that is okay, we've answered that too. What's your take on joint account? You can have a joint account from which you can do things together, bless people together, build together. But each of you should have his own account. As a, as a human being, you should be financially independent. That is the truth. Should be. Thank you. Somebody said I'm looking beautiful. Thank you. Oh, prophets, I did to bear with here. Thank you. Okay, I think I lost connection. I believe you have addressed my question. However, I can't address it. Husband neglects to pay his children's school fees. That's not right at all. Ask him about it. Is he going through some situations? Is, there, is it just for a season or is he irresponsible? And are you capable of paying? Or do you want to remove the children and put them in his school where you can, you know, pay? Please. Is there anything I can do to break silence in my relationship? Please. Oh, silent treatment is a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. Um, <laughs> you might need to get a professional. I'm sorry. I had six dreams. My husband will divorce me. Does it mean I am the wrong woman for my husband? Stop that dream. Stop ruling your life by dream. Where there is so much thought, you will have dreams. Stop it. It's because you are thinking about it six times. He will divorce you. No, 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 no. Please change the channel. Change your, your thoughts. What's the place of prophecies concerning marriage? I don't believe in people saying, Hey, Tolu, you shall marry. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. God is your God and he should be able to guide you. He says the meek I will guide in judgment. What age will a woman start dating? If you are mature, go ahead. We are different from each other. I got married early. Some people get married late. So, I've spoken about mentoring. Yes, uh, my sister at Funky Adi Tuberu offers help in overcoming masturbation. Yes, thank you for reminding me of that. And she even has a book. She is a prolific writer in that area. I thank God for her. Is it possible to be with a partner who is close to a female childhood friend? He dated the girl 
a long time ago, but since they are just friends now. Hmm, hmm. Fire on the mountain is rekindling old flames. Is there anything I can do to break silence? Okay, we have answered that. We must use our boys well. <laughs> we thank God for you. You married right man. My parents are not agreeing for my sister to marry a guy he met because of his tribe. Can you let her talk to her mother, to your mother first? Listen to her. They may be speaking from experience, may be speaking, you know, sometimes from, but that should not disturb them. Or you want to talk to someone they respect, or you want to explain, or you want the person to come and see, you know, don't just say, yeah, I'm going to elope. Don't elope. Please don't elope. Sometimes we parents, we are emotional about these things. And it's not our fault. You've raised your child. And you've seen how, you see the pattern in some tribes. I don't want your child to go. But we still have people that are, you know, different. And they are good people. So, don't elope. Uh -huh. Okay, a friend of mine is enduring disrespect from some members of her family in law. They talk junk about her and she fights her husband when she hears their insults. That's, the husband should fight for her. Yes, I'm going to save this and it will be on my Instagram page here for about 24 hours. Then I'll move it to YouTube. I've been married to my husband almost seven years, two children. I've had at least, oh no, 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 we can't see it in Jesus' name. You want to come? And I just came back from London yesterday. Oh, you're in the United Kingdom. Reach out to my office, please. We'll sort it out. There's a wife, a husband, whatever. It's true now. How can you deal with the manipulation? <laughs> Why are you not asking me about... We have four more minutes. And... Thank you. Thank you. I can mentor you. Why not? It's a structured one. You pay. Yes. Okay, you text, you called him, he's not picking, you texted him. I texted him to let him know why I moved up, but he didn't reply. I think that relationship is expired. I lost my marriage because I cheated. I find it difficult to forgive myself. You shouldn't have cheated. You know you shouldn't have cheated. But having said that, you need to move on. We all have weaknesses. And you need to plan that it will never happen again. Your marriage is lost, God will give you someone that will accept you but you must learn your lesson adultery is it is one of the worst things that can ever happen to a marriage even after the person has forgiven you years the pain is there that the person may not even be able to explain and the person will go through five different stages it's as if the person is bereaved sometimes it's fine sometimes you know it's not what any married person should do please stop cheating please Yes, so I've said this over and over. The covenant of life is superior to the covenant of marriage. You can say the anonymous questions, yes, to, to my email. I don't know how you're going to do that. <laughs> but, um, okay. Funke Felix Adejuma. I'm going to do this again. Not Felix, but Felix. Um, I'm going to do this again. How do you balance career and family as a younger woman? You just have to balance. We all go through it. You need wisdom to balance it. Married for 10 years and my husband keeps imposing his sister on me. She drops her three children without my consent and I'm forced to be busy. No! No is a complete statement. Put your feet down. No, no, no. You like my lipstick? <laughs> Thank you. How can you venture into a new business? I'm already coming to South Africa. Okay, everybody. This is how we're going to draw the curtain tonight. You think it's easy to make, to answer questions? We still have a lot. And my team is taking notes. By God's grace, I will do this again. And again. And again. Ooh. There's no problem marrying your age, mate. <laughs> you also have a lot of questions. A lot. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Kojola Grace is here and she's a professional. She'll be able to help you. Go to Kingsley and Madrid or Konko. They'll be able to help you. At Funke Adetubero will be able to help you. I don't have answers to all the questions, but I'll do this again 
from time to time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for thanking me. God bless you. I have exams. I need to go. I need to read. I have a lot that I need to read. I'm in school. Mm -hmm. Good night, everybody. See you next week, Tuesday. God bless you all. Thank you. Appreciate it.